Hello everyone, it's Lindsay, and today I'm coming at you with a process video using the September Faith Art Box from Creative Retreat Kits. I do have an unboxing of this uh, box over on my channel if you want to check that out. I will have it linked down below for you guys so you can see everything that comes in the kit. Now I mentioned in that unboxing video and I'll mention it here for you guys, I made the number one YouTuber mistake that I had never done before. I lost video footage. So I had filmed my unboxing and filmed this process video several weeks ago, it was all ahead of the game for the first time ever. Um, I got on, edited all my photos, and then was going to come back and uh, edit my video footage. And sometime in the matter of those days, my footage got deleted and was not able to be recovered. So <laughs> I'm having to go back and recreate this project for you guys and film it. So you'll notice that some of my things, like I already have foam adhesive on this sticker because it was already on the project. I had to kind of deconstruct the project, take it apart, and put the stickers back to do the unboxing video that I also lost. But the good thing is I've already done a trial run and I'm not going to make any mistakes on this card and it's all going to work out for this video. So maybe it was for the better. But today we're going to be creating a memory dex uh, card using the September Faith Art Box. And if you're not familiar with the memory dex system, I did do one of these memory dex cards for a previous video for Creative Retreat Kits using last month's um, card and also the one the month before as well. So you can check out those videos on the Creative Retreat uh, channel. So we will be doing that today. And I like doing these as just kind of st a starter for the kit. Get a card in there for each kit and then I can jump into my Bible and do some more in-depth study and things like that. So we will be creating a card and what I have is just a blank memory decks card. Creative Retreat Kits did do a pre-sale on the punch about a month or so ago. Those should be shipping out pretty soon if not already. Um, and this is one of the cards that you can just pre-purchase already punched and ready to go. It's blank on both sides. So I will link that down below if you're interested in picking some of those up. But I have this month's kit with the stamp set. I pulled out this stamp set because I'm going to use this little wonky heart here. I guess you can't see that. Um, so that will be linked down below if it's still available. Uh, off camera, I went ahead and did a little bit of prep because I knew I was going to be doing a circle piece on the front. So I went ahead and just took some black cardstock and a nested circle die and cut out um, a circle out of that that we're going to do our stamping on. And then I do have a piece of fabric. I was looking through my stash and found this and it's got a lot of the same colors that are in the kit this month. So I wanted to include this just as a texture element on the card. I love that you can kind of go in with some bulkier pieces. You can do some stitching. You can do some techniques that are a little bit more difficult in your Bible a little bit more easily on a card like this. So I did want to stitch some fabric onto here as well. And I'm going to show you how to do a pattern stamping and blend some custom colors to get the colors from this kit. So let me go ahead and put you on fast forward and we'll put together this memory decks card. Okay, so we're gonna start work on the patterned background. So I have one of those cards there and I do have a um, nonstick craft mat uh, down on my table there. I have that link down below for you guys. It just protects my table from any of the ink when I stamp over the edge of the card. But uh, like I mentioned in the unboxing video, I did need to mix some of the Creative Retreat inks to get the right colors to match this month's kit. So here I'm mixing Rose Corsage and Powder Blue. And the trick with this is you want to go in with your lighter color first on the stamp, and then you can go in with your darker color right over the top and you can see you can get a more purpley color here. Now you can see there is some of that blue transferring onto the ink pad, don't worry. You can just wipe it off with a dry cloth and it comes right off, not a problem, does not ruin your ink pads. So don't worry about that. And it's just a fun way to kind of stretch out your inks a little bit and get some more colors. So. I'm going to do the same thing for this kind of peachy pink color. I'm using cotton candy and desert peach. Now my desert peach ink pad is a little bit drier. So even though it's the lighter color, I'm actually going in with it second. Uh, just because I found in my testing that my color matching worked a little bit better. So you may want to kind of play around and see which color um, first and then second gives you the closer um, color match that you're wanting, if that makes sense. So I'm just inking those up and then just trying to randomly but evenly space out the colors on this card and allowing some of that stamping to hang off of the edge. Here you can see I'm just wiping that off. That was a wet baby wipe. I don't suggest using it wet. Use it dry. That works a little bit better. For this last color, I'm using denim and mermaid teal, and then I am doing second generation stamping. So you'll see I'll ink up my stamp, stamp it off on my craft mat, and then take it to the card. Those two colors are very, very, very deep colors, and so when you layer them up, it was darker than the color that I was going for. So uh, you just kind of got to play around, explore, and kind of figure out what works for you. And I'm just going to add 
those little bits of blue in there and you can see how quickly you get this custom pattern going. So you can very easily create your own pattern papers and things like that. So I've pulled out a second stamp set and that had this little wonky heart in there. You can just use anything from your stash that has a small little heart in there. And I'm using the licorice ink from Creative Retreats to just fill in some of those other smaller areas and tie in some of the black. Cause I am gonna use a pretty big black circle element on the front of here and that's gonna pull in some of that black. So I'm gonna set aside that background for just a second and work on this embossed piece. So I did go ahead off camera and die cut out this circle out of just some plain black cardstock. And then I'm gonna take these stamps from the set that say um, peace not of this world and I'm just going to line them all up on this now the nice thing about a stamp positioning tool like this is it has grid lines on it so you can make sure everything's straight now you could do this without a stamp positioning tool but I really have found this to help tremendously in my ability to get things lined up if I need to stamp you know a second time see it's kind of all wonky and all over the place but then I can readjust those stamps and get them straight and evenly distributed how I want them before I stamp down now I'm gonna be doing some white heat embossing. So I wanna make sure that I prep this piece with tons of my power powder tools. So I'm just coating that cardstock with the powder tool because I don't want any of the white uh, powder to stick to anything but the stamped image. So I'm gonna ink up my stamps with some Versamark clear sticky ink. And on black paper, you can actually see where your stamping is. Um, so that's kind of helpful, but I'll go ahead and set that aside and apply some Ranger white embossing powder. I think some fine detail embossing powder may work a little bit better with that of stamp, but this one seemed to do just fine. And actually my first attempt at this uh, wasn't as clean as this attempt was. So maybe having to do it a second time kind of worked out for me. <laughs> uh, I'm just holding it with some craft tweezers while I take my heat tool to melt that embossing powder. So you want to heat it up till it's nice and melted. And then you can just take a dry paper towel and brush off the powder tool from the cardstock. And then now it's that um, deep black that it was to begin with. But before I stick that down, I am going to add a little bit of that fabric to there. So I just ran a little bit of uh, adhesive tape runner and then I'm creating these little pleats with the fabric. I did leave the center part open just because I didn't have enough fabric <laughs> to make it, you know, pleated all the way across and it's going to be covered up. So we don't, didn't need pleats in the center. I took that over to my sewing machine, ran it through my sewing machine um, just to make sure everything stuck down and then I can just uh, adhere these little tails to the back. Now I am gonna add a second card to the back of this and that's for a couple reasons. One is to obviously cover up my stitching on the back side, but also these cards are a little bit on the thin side and I prefer my memory decks cards to be nice and thick and sturdy. That way they're gonna hold up to me flipping through the box and taking them in and out and that kind of thing. So I like to double up my cards. Even when I'm just using pattern paper, I double up the cards. So now that stitching did add a little bit of dimension to this card. So I'm going to add some foam adhesive squares uh, to the top and bottom. And that way this black uh, circle piece will lay kind of evenly over the top of the memory decks card and it'll give it some dimension. And, you know, like I said, working on these memory decks cards, you can add dimension like crazy. Now this little sticker already had some foam adhesive on the back from the previous time I attempted this project. So I did have to apply some dry adhesive to these stickers just to get them to stick again. This is not normally what you have to do. The stickers typically are very sticky, but because I pulled them off, stuck them to the backer, and then now trying to re-stick them down on my project, I'm having to add a little bit extra adhesive. Because see, I just added that little dove and a few of those little branch pieces and finish that off. On the back side, I added that label. I did go ahead and write in Philippians 4-7. And then I'm just gonna um, write out the verse Philippians 4-7 on the back of this card. And that way I just have it at my fingertips, on my desk, something I can reach for and just have a verse reminder, um, you know, that God is there to guard our hearts and give us peace and just to have that reminder. So I wrote that out and now I'm just gonna finish off the back with a few of the stickers. So it says gift of peace. Add a couple of those wonky hearts, of course, why not? And then on the front side, I'm gonna finish it off with that super adorable bow clippy here. I did have a little bit of foam adhesive sticking out, so I just had to trim that off. 
but there is a look at the finished card. I love how this came out. I hope you guys too, too. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those down in the, in the comments down below for me. Uh, you can find in the description box links to everything that I used today and everything that I mentioned, so definitely check that out. Give this video a thumbs up if you were inspired. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.